Speaking of bite-sized chunks, we've got yeah. to take another bite out of our session and, and head to our next speaker, uh, someone that I think is just wonderful, uh, someone that I'm, I'm really lucky I've become friendly with over the years, and, and just, you know, ace all across <laughs> the board. It's Kat Cosgrove from Pulumi. Hey, Kat, why don't you come on in? Hello. Good morning slash afternoon. It's morning here. <laughs> Welcome. Well, Kat, um, I know we've got a lot to talk about uh, when it comes to security, the importance of security. And uh, I, I really just wanted to start by saying thanks for being part of this today. Yeah, happy to. Uh, thanks for, for having me. Um, it's, uh, I don't think I've ever been in an official Microsoft thing before, so that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Well, you're here, and that's all that matters. So, Kat, um, I know you've got some stuff to show us. That, whoop, oh, and um, some stuff crashing. I can fix that while I talk. Sure. Uh, I know you've got some stuff to show us today. Um, I, I, I believe you got a little mini presentation. Am I right? I we'll, do. Great. Uh, we'll, we'll be bringing that up in just a second. Uh, but first and foremost, Kat, uh, I, I know you're from Pulumi and automation, just like we've been talking about, is a big part of that. Yes. Uh, I don't like having to um, do a lot of things manually. If there is a conceivable way to um, automate something out of my personal responsibility, I, I think that is, um, that is my, my job to automate myself out of uh, menial tasks. It's uh, one, because I don't want to do these things over and over again. It's boring. Uh, and two, I say this in like virtually every talk I give, some of them more than once, but humans are actually really, really bad at repetitive tasks, it turns out. Um, it's extremely easy for a human to have a bad day or make a mistake or forget something and also we're we're super super slow compared to a computer with automation you can like iterate on uh the testing or whatever involved in making sure that an automated task is completed uh, successfully and correctly in a consistent reproducible way with people you can't really iterate on that we're we're unpredictable and there's nothing you can do to prevent somebody from having a bad day like that's that's not something you can you can plan for so mm -hmm. i think it's always uh it's always safer to automate things where you can and also it makes your employees happier when they don't have to <laughs> sure do the same thing over and over again and and so I think we're going to talk a little bit about security and how actually security fits into that story yep. because as you're moving along in your develop, uh, software development release uh, cycle, you, you don't necessarily want to think about security as a secondary thought. Correct. Yeah, you you don't. It should be a primary thought the whole time. Uh, I, I have a rant um, oh boy. In, in my talk. So you'll, you'll get to hear me kind of ramble about that a little bit. Um, I, I have even called the talk a rant, so I guess I'll just go for it. Um, yeah, so let's, let's hear what you have to say, Kat. I, I am, I am thrilled to get, hear you rant. It's something that I've always enjoyed. Oh, I know you listen, you love listening to me not shut up. Um, I, I cannot help but run my mouth. So, um, <laughs> hopefully this is entertaining for all of the people watching who I assume are on like Twitter and LinkedIn and everywhere else that y'all stream this. But um, absolutely. Yeah. OK, I will uh, go a ranting then. So y'all today I'm going to rant about DevOps. I am also going to rant about buzzwords just like a little bit. And I'm going to rant about security and maybe a little bit about the future. Uh, but before I start, here's a photo of me with my cat. Uh, her name is Espresso and she may or may not show up while I'm talking. She's actually in my lap right now. Uh, that's the best way to keep her quiet. I will not apologize for it if she yells because this is her house and we're in her living room right now. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me later, um, that's pretty easy to do. Uh, I am on Twitter at Dixie3Flatline and uh, Jay will be watching in the chat to forward on any questions, comments, complaints, compliments on my excellent sense of personal style or my bad Blink-182 <laughs> t-shirt that you may have. Um, 
Anyway, uh, let's go. So first, I want to talk about the title of this session. It involves the term uh, shift left. This is not a term I like, uh, partially because it sounds like a buzzword, and I'm kind of allergic to those. Partially because I don't think that's actually what we want to do with security. We, we throw this term around like security only exists at like the far end of the software development life cycle and nobody ever thinks about it until then. And like we now want to pick up the entire concept of security and drop it earlier in the software development life cycle. Um, but I, I don't agree. I don't think that's what we actually want to do. I don't think that's what we're actually doing. What we want to do is distribute it throughout the software development life cycle. First, I wanna make sure that everybody is on the same page here. Uh, this is a DevOps thing. So I know that I can probably assume that you all know what that means, but to err on the side of safety, this is the definition of DevOps that I'm gonna run with for the rest of this talk. DevOps is the term for the union of the development team and the IT operations team through the use of a specific set of practices and tool chains with the ultimate goal of shortening the software development life cycle and delivering more high quality software, okay? Uh, I'm defining that because I would rather not guess that everybody watching this uh, is already an expert. So in order for DevOps to work, it requires tools and a culture shift. It's not something that you can just say you're gonna do. This is a well-established fact. Uh, it's still the topic of a lot of really long conference talks about DevOps, even though DevOps has been a thing for about a decade now. Uh, I'm not gonna go into this a ton because much more qualified people than me give outstanding talks on this very subject and you should absolutely go listen to them. Probably somebody else has done it today, but to give context within the scope of this specific talk, DevOps may mean changing the way you write software. Your code needs to be written in, written in a way that's more modular and that makes it easier for other people to maintain it because ultimately people are the ones maintaining your code, it matters. And you need to merge with source often and pull from main often, make much smaller changes every single time run build and unit tests with every single commit if you can, and that process has to be automated. Nobody is doing that manually. Nobody wants to do that manually. That's like a, that's an enormous potential problem. If an entire team does this, you end up with conflicts less often, problems are discovered way earlier, so hopefully you can fix them immediately. The idea here is that nobody exists in a silo anymore, at least developers don't, and operations teams don't. Everyone is like doing DevOps to some degree at this point. And this is a cultural shift that can take some getting used to, but you're gonna be more efficient and you're gonna be less stressed out. And we've mostly handled this with developers and operations teams. We're still kind of having some growing pains though. So you might be asking Kat, where is security in this equation? The answer is it should be everywhere. It's not, but it should be. Your developers should care about security. Your ops teams should care about security. Your security team, which should still exist because distributing security across your entire SDLC doesn't mean like you don't have a dedicated security team anymore. Obviously they will still care about security. DevOps is about efficiency. And we have tools now to bring security into the rest of your DevOps pipeline. Uh, like there's more vulnerability detection and security automation tools out there than I really know what to do with or care to enumerate here. It, it depends on what kind of application you're building and where you're deploying it. Is it cloud native or not? There is some kind of tool for you. Really, there, there are a lot of them and you should probably be using a couple of them. But that doesn't eliminate the need for a security team. And it isn't picking up the entire concept of application security and moving it leftwards towards the devs. It's supplemental. 
This allows your developers and your ops people to help your security team by distributing the workload and catching some problems earlier. So you might be thinking, what about DevSecOps? The introduction of the idea of shifting security left gave birth to this term, DevSecOps. Uh, some people that I deeply love and respect use this term, uh, to be clear. Um, but to me, it's unnecessary. I, I am not really a fan of it. So earlier in this talk, I defined DevOps, right? I said DevOps is the term for the union of the development team and the IT operations team through the use of a specific set of practices and tool chains with the ultimate goal of shortening the software development lifecycle and delivering more high quality software. Fewer security issues and incidents is part of delivering more high quality software. It just, it is. Security is not a late stage addendum to DevOps. It's belonged there the whole time. It's natural. We should, we should have always been doing this instead of kind of just getting around to it now and putting a buzzword on it. So if security is a natural part of DevOps and everyone has to do DevOps to some degree to make the whole thing work, doesn't that mean we all have to do security? I, I think yes, and that's not shifting left. That's distributing it. Everyone involved in the development of a piece of software has obligations to the user and the users expect to not have their personal information exposed or their devices hijacked or whatever. We're all doing security here. Some of us just don't know it yet. And I'm not saying that all of the developers on a team have to become security experts overnight or all of your ops people have to become security experts overnight. I'm saying that there are some best practices that exist for uh, your stack, for your tool chain, for your environment. And if we want to make this work better, if we want to make this easier, if we want to make these things uh, more commonly automated, then it's important that everybody on your team is aware of security best practices specific to their role. And again, this isn't replacing a security team. This is just shifting some of their load throughout the rest of the SDLC. It's not picking up security and dropping it at the beginning. It's handing some of that work off, some of the work that's easier to automate through using code scanning or vulnerability detection, or uh, if you're in cloud native, some kind of like container tooling to make sure that there's nothing nefarious going on inside of your containers. There are, there are things you can do to make this easier on the part of your ops team. It's best practices around networking and like cluster permissions and on and on and on. These should never be falling to like a single employee or a single team, we should, we should all be doing this, or it's not DevOps. We're just doing DevOps, but keeping security in a silo, that, that sucks. That's not very helpful or efficient. And it's not what we wanted when we decided DevOps was a thing at DevOps Days Ghent 10 years ago. So uh, that's the end of my rant. <laughs> If you have any questions for me, I can take some of them now. If you would like to get a hold of me later, you can do that on Twitter at Dixie3Flatline. I do answer questions there. You can also try emailing me at cat at palumi.com, but I'm gonna warn you, I do not answer my emails with any degree of urgency. So <laughs> expect that to be like way slower than um than well, Kat, I email. will. I will do my best not to email you. I don't want to get more more email into your bo email box. I'm sure that there's lots and lots of things in your inbox that you will get to eventually. And, and of course, um, Twitter handles are right here on the bottom of our, our little chat or windows. So you can head over there. Um, so I got a question for you, Kat. Um, I want to talk for a second about the tooling. 
around okay. security. Um, sure. and, and, is there tooling to best ensure I'm implementing uh, the best possible strategy for security and say like my older apps? Uh, I don't think that there is any one tool that exists that makes sure that there you are in a best case scenario security wise for like all applications. It's like security best practices are an it depends situation. And so I, I don't think it's really possible to build a tool that um, covers all of the bases for all of the different ways you could build an application. Um, all the different languages you could use, all of the different places you could deploy it. I, so I don't I don't think there's a one size fits all. Um, certainly there are tools you can use to try to to mitigate some problems. Uh, yeah, I know like OWASP is a, a big tool for for scanning code and um, th there's a number of different, uh, open source projects and obviously paid projects that you can implement as yeah. part of that strategy to, to, in, to shift left, if you will. And I know you, you hate that term, but I, uh, I, yeah, I, the, I think about it. There are things you can use to like kind of get there, but uh, you should never actually assume that your application is, is secure um, because you can't predict the future. You, you can't predict what an attacker is going to do. You can't predict what vulnerabilities will be discovered and disclosed later on. Mm -hmm. I know espresso. She's mad. Um, but we can we can certainly try. There are vulnerability detection and code scanning tools, both free and open source, that will help you out. Um, which ones I recommend depends on like how you're building an application. Frankly, that's uh, that's it. There are so many of them that uh, honestly, I would just be googling it. <laughs> Sure. for a specific situation it's it's really outrageous how many of these tools there are now and that there are big like uh, services that can yes. be implemented as well like one of the things that a lot of people uh rely on are web application firewalls waf to be yep. able to sit in front of your application to add just another uh level of secure uh, because ultimately you, your security posture in your organization it needs to be strengthened. And the way that uh, you do that is by utilizing the tools that are out there and also by, by considering it uh, at the beginning of the process. So uh, one of the great things that I know people do is they implement testing practices that include security. Yes. Um, that they're doing audits uh, and not just audits for compliance reasons, but because they care enough about their application and, and code to, to run audits regularly. Yeah. And if you're using some kind of like vulnerability detection tool, um, some kind of code scanning tool that should be included in your CI. So like if, if a problem is detected, the build should be bounced. Like that's, that is automating something, something easy out of your hands so that you don't have to worry about it. Your security team doesn't have to worry about it. Your ops team doesn't have to worry about it. It gets bounced back to the devs and they address whatever vulnerability was found, which is usually just like an outdated dependency or something. So you just bump the version of the, of the dependency if there is a fixed version, or you reassess whether or not like that particular vulnerability is one that you want to freak out about sure. uh, and hold up a build over. But yeah, there's there are ways to build this into your pipeline so that you don't really have to think about it. And it's just one less thing on your actual security team's plate to like have to to deal with. Absolutely. And so, you know, Kat, I, I want to just wrap up this little session here with you and I. Um, I, I know that uh, we've covered a lot of stuff. Uh, but I, I wanted to ask you because, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of really cool stuff over there at Palumi. Uh, I know you just had a conference. Am I right? Where you, you, yeah. um, you, you can you talk just a second about what you did and people if they want to watch the recordings where they can go? Yeah, sure. So um, Palumi uh, hosted the Cloud Engineering Summit yesterday, which was a uh, free virtual conference for cloud engineers all about engineering for the cloud. This was not, to be clear, a like Pulumi specific conference. We were just organizing it. 
Um, so there were people talking about, you know, cloud formation and Terraform and whatever else there too. But I was the host for the build track. Uh, we had a lot of really incredible speakers, including uh, we had Chris Nova talking about infrastructure as software. Uh, her talk was incredible. We had Liz Fong Jones on my track talking about what open telemetry is. Uh, we had Heidi Waterhouse talking about accessibility. Uh, and it was just, it was, it was incredible. All of the talks are um, already online free on uh, YouTube. So if you just go to cloudengineeringsummit.com, you can get to the talks from there, but they're all free and there to view online. We also had, we had Emily Freeman and like Kelsey Highwater. I'm actually, I don't know how we managed to put together a lineup that good. But well, we it's, <laughs> it sounds really, really solid. I know your, yourself and, and Maddie Stratton over there at Pulumi are, are doing a lot of great work to help everybody kind of automate their, their infrastructure and, and really get the right stuff done uh, yeah. that, that takes that manual work out of your entire process. With minimal so, effort. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, Kat, I want to say thank you so much. Thank um, you. And, no, no problem. You know, it's it's great to always get a chance to talk with you. Um, and I really look forward to seeing what you're up to next. Yeah. Any place we should keep our eyes open at? Mm, if I do something spicy, it'll always end up on my Twitter account. Fair enough. Well, thanks, <laughs> Kat. Thank you very Thank much you. for being here today. All right. Well, that was Kat uh, Cosgrove over from Pulumi. Um just a, a wonderful person to speak with. And we also got to hear from Espresso the cat who had a lot to say, but I don't think was overwhelming. Uh, we just got the right amount of information from Espresso. And so 